Hey, what's up, guys? This is MJ100K and Dane. This is from Car Scoop, so I'll put the link in the description, but we're going to talk about it real quick. Frustrated Mirai owner sue Toyota over hydrogen headaches. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I hate to say I told you so, but I did tell you, and it yeah. is so, and we're <laughs> going to talk about it. I'm, <laughs> I'll tell you, I, made, I rolled a clip. I want to roll the, roll the clip. Unless the government puts billions of dollars into making hydrogen stations all over the place. Other than that, it ain't going to happen. Unless something drastically changed, hydrogen is not going to happen. Stop trying to make hydrogen happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, no. Forget that, man. Dude, they're ridiculous. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. So anyway, yeah, that is when I was telling you guys that hydrogen was never going to happen. It's not going to happen. This is a lawsuit, and they are alleging that Toyota misled buyers about the ease of owning a Mirai. Mm -hmm. Owners are claiming that they have to drive long distances to find a hydrogen refueling station, and they also complain about lower than advertised driving range figures. Uh-oh, but this so, is not good. Yeah, so I understand complaint too. That makes sense, right? You're sold something that is going to get X amount of miles a gallon, and it doesn't meet what's advertised. I could see it being upset. I don't think Toyota said there's going to be all these fuel stations nearby. <laughs> it should have been known ahead of time. Yeah. You, know, you don't get to go on your, you know, your gas app and plug in or search for hydrogen stations because they don't exist in most places. Yeah. Not a lot of them. No. So anyway, it says uh, the lawsuit, according to the lawsuit, Toyota and its salespeople told prospective buyers that hydrogen fuel is available and that refueling the Mirai is seamless adding that it would be comparable to refueling with gasoline. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, no. So <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, the customers are saying that they frequently have struggled to find refueling stations. It took a long time to get to these stations. Mm -hmm. And even once you get there, is no guarantee of success. Some of the equipment was broken and the fuel cards were not compatible and they were left stranded. Mm -hmm. And they weren't able to refuel, and now they can't drive the car anywhere. Uh-oh. And this says sometimes the hydrogen fuel is unavailable for days at a time. Yep. Refueling could take many hours on average. It <laughs> takes hours to refuel. That's worse than electric. When Toyota says seamless, that means when everything's working correctly. Yeah. Refueling technology is very new, and hydrogen is the hardest gas to contain. The hardest. And so yeah. very high pressure, it takes a very special fuel cell. It takes a very special valving to make sure you're not le having any leakage when you're making that refueling happen. And so these are similar problems that EV had, you know, Tesla had in the beginning when they started making their own power stations. They've kind of gotten through those woes and, and worked through that. And I believe Toyota's probably going to do the same and whoever else decides to go this hydrogen route but it's going to take more people buying these cars, investing the time and money into them to make this improve. And if they don't, it won't. So. Yeah. That's interesting. You mentioned Tesla because um, mm -hmm. a lot of the people want to buy Teslas because Tesla maintains their own uh, charging stations. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're usually working. I think a lot of some of these other places, I don't know, maybe they are run by the local municipality and, you know, they're not getting around to fixing them. You know, they're government type places and they're not very efficient. So and it's just part shortages, right? It's not, they're not widely used. So you need parts for a gas pump. You know, there's gas pumps all across the country. There's companies that supply parts and pieces for those things. Who's making the replacement parts and pieces for the very first refueling station in Nebraska? Yeah. You know, what I mean? how long is it going to take to get parts there when something goes wrong? Yeah, and they're, they're only about 50 stations in the whole country, and most of them are in California. Yeah, these people are on the cutting edge, and these are the stresses you have when you are the first to get a new technology. Yeah. So if you're saying you've been misled, I'm going to say hey, you're just under-researched. So the article is saying that um, the hydrogen pumps sometimes freeze up and lock onto the vehicle, mm -hmm. and then the frustrated owners are then wet, left waiting over 30 minutes for the pump nozzle to warm up enough for a safe disconnection. Yeah, that does not sound like a lot of fun. I don't think it's necessarily Toyota's fault. 
that these stations are not uh, being kept up as much as they should be. The salespeople at the dealership are not usually working directly for Toyota. It's usually like a third party that owns the dealership. So who knows what the salespeople said. But I mean, at the same token, like Dane, I think you're right. This is new technology. So what did you expect? Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I did tell everybody that this was going to happen. Hydrogen is not going to happen. Okay. It's, it is, that is what it is. It's, it's going to be no hydrogen. The OEMs that have researched into these hydrogen vehicles, they need to just put those vehicles in a garage and say, look, they'll be ready when the infrastructure is ready. And that's probably never going to happen. So just leave them in the garage. I wouldn't waste another dime researching <laughs> into hydrogen if I were an OEM. I mean, it's a complete waste of money. It'd be, they'd be better off spent doing something else. What do you think, Dane? Uh, yeah, I disagree. Uh, I think it's going to happen. It's, it's just going to happen slowly. And for the same reasons I stated, you know, um, there's not going to be refueling stations if there's not any cars. The cars have to come first. And so these are the struggles that we're going to deal with as, you know, wanting to push these technologies forward. So if you guys want hydrogen, you got to buy a hydrogen car and you got to deal with the struggles. And well, they're like 40% off now. Like they can't give those cars away. <laughs> they're, they're really cheap. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't buy one for 500 bucks. What are you going to yeah. do with that thing? <laughs> I'm, I might just because there's a place here in town that I think I can get hydrogen at because they make um, the holding tanks for some of these refueling stations. Yeah, I think they have what I need there. I know a couple of people I could probably find out, but otherwise, yeah, there's no reason I would ever want one. And even then, I'm not going to drive a small car like this. I, I need a truck most days, so it just isn't for me. I just want to say to all first adopters, don't be a first adopter. Be like a fourth and... T a ninth and 11th and 12th adopter like wait till everybody else gets this new technology like you there's a lot of money to be spend it on a car let somebody else do it somebody's got to be first though man you no, know you don't get cool stuff without someone else to test it out i want to be last <laughs> <laughs> but not everybody can be last no, no. that's what's going to happen with hydrogen everybody's going to be last and it's never going to happen <laughs> that could be what kills it yeah all right well, if you have any comments about this uh, hydrogen debacle and uh, if you really love hydrogen, please let me know what are you thinking. Let me know in the comments what is on your mind. Thank you for tuning in and have a good one. I'll see you guys.